update. As you can see, we've got our secondary move upwards. It broke this trend line right here, and now it's pushed all the way to the uh, upper end of 8,000. Where do we go from here? Uh, well, its price action is really toppy. I mean, this last move up here uh, just doesn't have any real um, momentum or, or even volume. Uh, it is really lackluster. So it's it's on air. Um, I, I don't think it's going to get much past that uh, 8,900. Maybe we can get up to 92. And if it was really, you know, maybe 94. Um, but uh, really, it's it's topped out. It, it's just it really needs to pull back. Um, it is once it gets that rollover, I'm going to be looking for the mid 5,000 to low 5,000 range, and then we'll probably start getting long. Um, but we have to see what the price action is. Probably the you'll get tether news or some kind of bullshit like that. Uh, that's just waiting in the background. The, the NYG is not going to go away. Tether. Uh, wants to pretend like they will and they're going to dismiss the case. I just don't think it's going to be likely. And the main reason why is because the majority of customers that use Binance in the U.S. use Tether. That's right. And if they're... <laughs> uh, so the argument of them not having jurisdiction, not uh, good luck. Um, uh, they're bulldogs and uh, I think they're going to be going after Tether. And uh, I think that's a good thing because... Tether is really a, a manipulative force that is just a little bit, um, they have a little bit too much power and they need to be taken down. Um, and uh, that, that would be good for the overall space in my opinion. But outside of that, supply and demand wise, we're looking for this area down here. There's nothing really changed. And again, you know, uh, one thing wanted to be noted, I can't go long. I can't do both long and shorts or else I would for hedging. Um, you know, uh, BitMEX doesn't offer that. It's an unfortunate thing. I think Deribit does, uh, where you have two different accounts. You have uh, sub accounts where you can actually have longs and shorts. That would be uh, more positive overall because then I would be able to sell and buy and do combinations of the two. And uh, so you do have a higher risk profile on BitMEX, unfortunately, because of the singular approach. But there's nothing you can do that's the way um, BitMEX works. So that's what we got to work with. I mean, outside of that, I hold Bitcoin. I'm always long, um, uh, longer term, but that's a HODL and uh, position. I always keep a HODL position. At least the maximum amount that I go up to is 80% um, for trading and 20% just hold and wait for a million or a hundred thousand, whatever fantastical numbers we get in the, the years to come. But that's longer term, you know, that, that is not uh, trading or anything like that. But I, I think, in my opinion, uh, you should always hold, you know, this is what I, I personally do. You should, I always hold, you know, a certain percentage of Bitcoin for the future. And that's not something that I really trade, you know, I was asked that. and um, There's nothing to do with it. You just buy it and hold it. It's like a... a savings account or CD, you know, you don't look at it. <laughs> but outside of that, um, that's what we're looking for trading wise. And these numbers don't change. Uh, it's nice that we can dollar cost average upwards and whatnot. I know some people worry and whatnot, but there's no point. Uh, the markets don't care if you worry or what your feelings are and uh, neither do I. Um, you know, I, I trade what's there and what I've seen and uh, even though this is an extreme exaggeration, I mean, it does happen. And uh, uh, it happened again, I'm going to repeat, it's happened in history. Now, when I was selling uh, all the way here in the 18,000 range, and people were screaming at me, why are you selling? Oh, you're going to get wrecked and all this. We're going to 50 or 40,000. 40,000 was the prime number, like right now, 10,000 is the prime number. And... Um, you know, I was like, well, that's what the chart says. The chart says we're going to be going back down to, you know, the 12,000, 11,000 range. And um, that's just what's there. And it, it did. And uh, once it went down here, I bought it back. And then it went back up here and I sold it again. And finally, it went all the way down to the target line, which is right down here, down to the 6,000. And rinse and repeat, you know, sell, buy, sell buy, sell, and on and on. 
buy, sell, buy, sell, and then we had the major break, buy, 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 and then sell, 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 and then, you know, up, 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 sell, 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 and then when it goes back down, buy, 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 buy. You see what I'm repeating here? That's just the way it is. Now, the nice thing about this is what people don't understand from a dollar cost averaging point of view, uh, if I just helped, um, I would have just my one Bitcoin or whatever, uh, uh, 100 Bitcoin or, you know, position, and that would be it. I would just be holding. But I was able to turn that into three, four Bitcoin for that time period by getting in and out and whatnot. So that worked to my advantage. Um, and, you know, so I'm going to always be dollar cost averaging. That's just the nature of, you know, the frequency up and down from buying and selling um, adds to your position so you're able to grow the Bitcoin. You have to understand that's my philosophy and it's always worked and uh, I, I will keep doing it because that's what the market has told me to do. Not anybody else, uh, the market. And every time that you get these exaggerations and everybody's um, freaked out and, and whatnot, you know, I, I get it, but I, I can't change what the chart says. And if I didn't buy here and I freaked out and said, oh no, it's gone too low, I would have never taken advantage and sold it up here. And when I sold it up here, people are saying, no, we're going to go back to the highs and higher. Um, you know, I would have never done anything. So it's the same thing as like right here, selling. You know, if I would have never sold, um, I can't take advantage of when we do get that down move. And the odds are in my favor, so I'm going to play the odds. I'm going to play what happens most often because the charts told me every time that I've been right and because of what they told me, not what I thought, felt, or, you know, uh, emotions or hopes or, you know, any of that. And uh, so I have to trade what's there, and that's what's there. And I've showed it to you. You've seen it time and time again. This is what we're looking for. And I hate to have to repeat this over and over, but, you know, uh, the psychology of people is to get upset and worry. And, and you know, that doesn't do you any good. The, the market doesn't care. And uh, in time, I, I've learned to not either. Um, just is what it is so we're gonna be waiting for this high back down here and under and that's that's what's there other than that have a great weekend and I'll talk to you guys later